Hey y'all, happy Sunday. If you haven't noticed, I am mixing things up a little bit. I'm actually up in my coupon room upstairs in my house. I wanted to bring you guys a little bit something different today. I know I am normally out in the store showing you the deals that I find, but I kind of wanted to mix it up and show you guys what I actually do with the stuff that I buy. I took a poll on Instagram earlier last week and asked you guys if y'all would rather see a stockpile tour or a video on reselling your stockpile and ultimately reselling stockpile won out. So then I asked people to leave their questions that they had about reselling their stockpile and I'm going to answer those in today's video. So it's going to be really similar to just kind of a Q&A session. I'll come on and off the camera with y'all's different questions and some other questions that I think people might have about reselling a stockpile. So before we get started, I want to make sure that all of you here are subscribed to my channel. If you could take a second and do that for me, I would appreciate it so much. And without further ado, let's hop into it. So I want to give a little background before I really dove into the questions is that I have been couponing and clearance hunting for about two and a half years now. I've been reselling for probably about two years. So I'm just going to tell you guys what has worked best for me, what I suggest or what I recommend or what I say is not the end all be all. Um, it's just what works for me. So there are a lot of other ways that you can resell and do things. And of course you always have to make it work for you and your family. So don't think that by the way I do things is the way it has to be done. That's not the point I'm trying to make. I'm just trying to help anyone who may want to get started with reselling and just don't know where to begin. So just wanted to give you that little background and I will start with your questions. All right, let's start with the most asked question that I get about reselling my stockpile is where do I resell it? I personally sell on Facebook Marketplace, primarily. That is where I began reselling my stockpile. It's what I've consistently used. It's been the most effective for me. And I have stuck with that for about two years now. So that is personally my preferred method to sell my stockpile. Second, someone asked me, have do I set my stockpile out like in my front yard, in my driveway as like a garage sale? And if you've been following me on Instagram for a while, you know I have done a couple of those. I did two last year. The one before COVID was extremely successful. The one during COVID, not so much, but it did help move some of my stock. So that is another way that I do resell my stockpile. My HOA only allows two a year. So every six months I can do one. I haven't done one yet this year. I've been super busy, different bunch of different things going on, but that is one way that I have sold my stockpile in the past. Another way that I sell my stockpile is to friends and family. Y'all, those are always going to be your number one customers is your friends and family. They want to support you. Don't think because you coupon, they may think you weird. I mean, they might, but your friends and family typically are going to be the number one people that support you. So don't be afraid to ask them, you know, like, Hey, I've got a bunch of this stuff. I can offer it to you at a great price. You know, would you be interested? Definitely utilize them as sellers for your stockpile. And another one that I do is I work with certain organizations. So a lot of times I will donate some stuff, but I do also work with nonprofits that are willing to pay me money. So of course I give them a great deal and they buy in bulk. And last year I did work with one and it ultimately moved a ton of my stockpile. So I was extremely grateful for it. So that is another option. Some other means of selling your stockpile that I don't participate in, you know, I'm not saying never, but currently right now I don't, that is selling on Amazon, on eBay, on other apps like Facebook Marketplace, such as OfferUp, LetGo. I tried those two and those y'all, those just did not work for me very well. But what would work for me may work better for you. So um, those are other avenues. I do have friends that sell on there and they are very successful at it. I forgot to mention Mercari. Some of my friends sell on there and they do awesome at that. So those are all the ways that I can think of right now off the top of my head that you can sell your stockpile and how I do so, as well as what you can do to move your stock. So probably my next most asked question is pricing. I want to start off by saying, y'all, the price of living in California is not the same as the price of living in Texas. So I can't tell you exactly what to price your items at. There is no set price for any specific item. You want to really start by doing your homework. So look up on Facebook Marketplace, maybe what people are selling, selling comparable items at on there to kind of know, make sure you're competitive and that make sure you will get that sale over someone else selling something similar. That is something I highly recommend. Sometimes too, if you shoot me a picture on Instagram with what you're looking to sell, I am usually very helpful in trying to tell you what I would sell it at. Again, this is just what I would sell it at based on my location. 
but I highly recommend you do your homework and see what others are selling those products at in your area. Also, you want to also keep in mind how much did you pay for it when pricing? You know, if you paid, a let's say, $5 for this, you know, I mean, these go for what? I don't have any kids, but this goes for about $9. So, I mean, at that, you don't really have a whole lot of room. So, I mean, if I got it for a dollar, though, I may be willing to go lower. I may be able to sell it for $4 or $5. It really depends on what price you got it at as well. I can't tell you, you know, hey, I would price that at $5, but if you paid $5 for it, you're not going to get any money out of it. So, it really comes down to your location and what things are selling for in your area and how much you pay for it. Those are the main things that I look at when pricing my items. There's one more thing that I forgot to mention that I want to discuss when it comes to pricing. I always try to double my money. So if I bought this pair of Pampers at $250 or I know I want to sell it for $5, I need to get it at $250. If I don't get it for $250, I'm not going to buy it because it has to be worth my time and the money paid. So I always try to double it. So if I did buy that for $250, I could probably price that at $5 when selling it. That is a good rule of thumb to go by. Again, it's not the end all be all rule, but that's just typically my rule when determining what to sell an item at. When it comes to reselling and I am posting things on Marketplace, I prefer to do it in bundles. So if it's a bigger, maybe clearance item, yes, I will post that by itself. If it's a bunch of small clearance items, I will post them together in a bundle. But if it's a lot of my couponing stuff, I like to sell them in bundles. Y'all, I do not meet up with anybody on Facebook Marketplace for less than $10. It has to be worth my time. So I that's why I do the bundles because I can put more similar or like items in a bundle and sell that to one person. It just moves it a lot quicker. You'll move more of your stock that way. It is the most thing that I found effective for me. Of course, you can sell it individually, but I just prefer to do bundles to move it, move it out of my stockpile faster. So following up on that previous question about bundles, I want to talk a little bit about what your bundle or your posting on Marketplace or wherever you're posting it should kind of look like. Again, not how you have to do it, but this is what I recommend. So I will try to put some visuals here for you guys as I'm talking of what some of my bundles look like on Facebook. But for the first thing, you want to make sure in your bundle that it's all like items. Like you don't want to put a baby doll and toothpaste. You know, those just things don't, those don't really go together. You want to maybe put toothpaste, mouthwash, toothbrush, um, other home care products, you know, shampoo. Those are the kind of things you want to put together. Make sure they are, they don't have to be the exact same, but make sure they are similar and something that would interest a buyer. Next. When you are taking pictures of your items, you want to make sure the background is clear. I am in my coupon room at the table that I do all my postings for. It's just a solid brown table in a tan wall. And I put all my, all my items on here and take those pictures like that. So on my page, on my Facebook marketplace, they all look the same. So that is something I highly recommend too. So it is aesthetically pleasing and the viewer can see everything that is in your bundle. That leads me to, you want to make sure you kind of spread everything out or so that the the buyer can see everything that's in the bundle. Because if not, they're going to have a ton of questions and you're going to keep going back and forth, back and forth, and you may not get the sell. Um, so I definitely recommend making it all viewable for the um, buyer to see. Finally, in the post, you want to be as descriptive as possible because, again, you could go back and forth with the buyer answering a ton of questions and, again, not get the sale. So, you know, if it's a 32-ounce bottle, maybe list 32 ounce. Or if it's if you're selling a bundle and you put $20, well, they're going to be like, is that $20 for one? Is that for two? Or is it for all? So I always like to put, like, $20 for all and list the sizes in there. And then also in my description, I like to list my meetup locations. Um, I will jump a little bit, talk a little bit more about that in the next video after this, but that is something I also want to list in my description is where I'm willing to meet. And finally, I like to list what form of payment do I accept? So I only accept cash, but again, I'll talk to y'all a little bit more about that in another question. If you want to resell locally, make sure you always meet the buyer in a public place. A police station is preferred anywhere that you can meet someone and make it close to your house. Again, at the end of the day, they're the buyer and you're the seller. So make sure the meetup location is close to you. Don't drive 30, 40 minutes away. I mean, unless you really want to and it's a really good deal, you can't pass it up, that's fine. But I meet at two locations 
then they are both five minutes away from my house and they're both a gas station and HEB. I meet at those two locations every time. It is very rare that I will not meet someone there. Another reason besides it being just a public place that I like to meet someone so close to my house is there's a potential to upsell your buyer. What that means is say they bought two packs of these diapers for $10, right? And they ask, hey, do you have any more? And you can be like, you know what? I actually do. I live, you know, five minutes away. Let me run and go grab those for you and I'll be right back. That is another way to increase your sales. Of course, you should probably always ask them maybe before you meet, especially if you have more, you know, like, hey, just wanna let you know I have more um, if you're interested. But sometimes the buyer changes their mind on site. So, you know, they say like today, I had a lady, I had tied and I actually had an extra one in my car and she asked me if I had any more. And so I was like, yeah, I do. And so, you know, I increased my sales from let's say $24 to $30. So that's another reason why I like to meet very close to my home. You know, I understand that not everyone wants to meet someone in person, especially in today's times, I get it. Um, but y'all, I've been doing this for two years now. I've never had any really strange encounters where I felt super maybe scared or nervous about a meetup. But y'all, I get it. If you don't want to do that, that's fine. You don't have to meet someone in person to sell items. Like I said, you can do it online. There are a ton of different options for reselling your stockpile. But I, I do understand if not everyone wants to meet someone in person. And kind of leading to into that, I want to talk about why I only accept cash. So I will on occasion accept maybe Venmo from someone. I'm done using Cash App. If you follow me on Instagram, like about, what was it? six months ago, someone was kind of sketchy on that and like requested the money back because they said they were there and didn't see me, but I believed it to be a lie because I'd been waiting there and she never showed up. So and had already sent me the money. So I only accept cash. You run the risk of it being fake. You can get one of those um, bill markers and check your bills to see if they're fake. I don't think those are very expensive if you're worried about potentially the cash being fake, but I really try to stick to cash only and that makes them actually show up so I don't have to deal with it if they, you know, prepay me on Venmo and then don't show up and then I've got to send it back and potentially running through a whole list of those issues with that. So that's another reason why I only accept cash at my meetups for selling my stockpile. So I got a great question from someone about bargaining. You know, what do you do if someone tries to undercut your price a little bit? And I will just say, you know, if it is, if I'm asking $35 and someone asks for 10, I just ignore them. Honestly, I just ignore them. But you know, if they're maybe give or take $5, I, I might agree to it or meet them in the middle of that. Uh, it really just depends how much you pay for it. You know, if you're, there is no room for doubling your price there. So say you paid 10 and you got it at 20 and you know you want to double your money and there's no room to lower the price. You just have to be firm. Um, again, you could just keep ignoring them. Usually I would say, you know, price is firm and sometimes they'll understand. I mean, I mean, I don't think they'd be doing their job if they didn't ask for a lower price. I mean, we all want, I mean, obviously we're in the coupon community. We all want discounts. Um, but it, you know, you don't have to be rude about it. Or, I mean, sometimes people give you attitude back. I mean, those you can just ignore. You know, I think it was at Dollar General one time. I got all the Christmas scent, uh, for Breeze and all that for like 10 cents or 25 cents. And this lady messaged me. She's like basically saying I was ripping people off because they could get that at 10 cents at Dollar General. You know, when that, when that happens, I mean, some people don't want to go look for it or put in that work to get those deals. So some people might think my $10 that I charge for like six or seven things, which I didn't think was a lot, it's a really great deal. So those types of things I would just ignore bargaining. Just make sure you have that room there. Um, if you want to lower your price, but just be firm and you can, you can tell them then at that point, you know, if you're offering 20, you could be like, Hey, look, ma'am, this actually retails for $30 plus tax. So, you know, you're saving $12 essentially by buying it this way. And sometimes people understand, sometimes people just don't care, but that's just the name of the game when it comes, comes to reselling. Another great question was what happens if something does not sell? Y'all I've had stuff sit here for six months. Some I probably had maybe since I started, <laughs> but luckily I've been able to get everything cheap enough that it just typically, I can usually donate it. Maybe it'll resell eventually, or my family can use it, or I can use it. Um, so I don't ever get too worried if things don't resell. 
One option that I know a lot of people do is if they buy something, they keep the receipt and after a month, if it doesn't sell on whatever platform that they're using, they will return it. Um, you know, we can't really do that with Ibotta type items or rebate apps, but if it's a clearance item that you bought and you don't really know if it's going to resell and you had it for a month and you know, you're really not getting any traction on it and you need that money back, then yeah, I definitely recommend returning it. I think that's a great option that people do, but sometimes it's just patience y'all. I, like I said, I've had things for six months. I've had some toys that I had for a while and at Christmas time, y'all, they went so quick. Everyone was just snatching them up at Christmas time. So, and a lot of times with clearance and couponing, we get stuff after season. So, you know, say we get these toys after Christmas. Okay, so unless people are buying for like a birthday or anything, Christmas time is probably going to be your best time to resell them. So, yes, you got them late December, early January. You might have to hold on to them for a year for them to sell. Not always, but sometimes that is the case. And it just comes with patience. Just be patient and the right buyer hopefully will come along. So, a majority of my followers and subscribers are from Texas. Texas. I mean, it's in my name, Texas Frugal Finds. I actually grew up in a very small town here in Texas. It had about a thousand people, no stoplights. I moved to a town my senior year high school right next door. It had one stoplight, so that was an upgrade. I don't think they got a Dollar General until I was either a senior in high school or already in college. Um, but very small, small towns. And this kind of leads me into my next questions that I got from a couple people about living in a small town and reselling in you know, how maybe people might feel about you couponing. So let me talk about the reselling part of that. With that being said, this is really where you have to hone into using your friends and family to resell your stockpile. I mean, in a small town, you know a majority of the people. I think small town couponers actually have an advantage when it comes to reselling. Because me here in Houston, every buyer that I meet typically is someone I don't know. I have a couple regulars, but most of the time it's people, just random people on Marketplace that want to buy my stuff. So I feel like small town people really do have that advantage. Once one person hears you do it and they tell them how cheap they got stuff from you and just the word of mouth starts to spread, I think that could really work to your advantage. I am, you know, maybe potentially looking, moving back to a small town someday. And so I'm really going to try to establish some regular customers that way and continue to move my stockpile. Another thing that someone mentioned is, you know, they don't know how people will maybe respond to them reselling or, you know, may make them feel bad about it. You know what, guys, at the end of the day, it's your hobby. It's you. It's something you love and it's something you want to do. Don't let anyone else tell you that it's wrong. You know, that stems from jealousy. That stems for from a lot of underlying things within that person. I know how small towns can be, but don't let that stop you. You know, that extra money could change your life. It could do so much for you. And to let the thought of someone else telling you what you're doing is wrong or you're poor or whatever it may be, I I don't think that's right. And I think if it's something you want to do, you should definitely go after it and, and make it happen. All right, y'all. So that wraps up all that I have about reselling your stockpile. If you have any questions about anything that I mentioned, please make sure to drop those below. Or if you have any new comments or any feedback on any of the information I provided, drop that in the comments. I'll be happy to answer anything that you guys have. I feel like I hit the basics of reselling, but I'm sure I missed something. I'm sure I'll hop right off of here and be like, Lauren, you're, you, how did you miss that? You forgot to mention that. So if I did miss anything, I will either drop it down in the comments or I'll make a new video and explain that. But I really appreciate you guys joining me. If this video was helpful to you in any way, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. Or if you just liked it, I appreciate your guys' support. And I hope you guys have a great week. Bye.